here with Brenda Bentz, who's a leadership branding expert, has coached over 700 executives globally, and is the author of several corporate and personal branding books. And Brenda, we'd like to learn a little bit more about your new book, Would You Want to Work for You? <laughs> Tell us a bit about what was the inspiration for yeah. such a provocative title, provocatively titled book. Well, thank you for having me today. I appreciate <laughs> it. Um, listen, I was coaching, as you said, over 700 executives. And I started seeing the same behaviors over and over and over again, whether it was Western, Eastern, all around the world. And I thought, if I'm seeing these same behaviors and I can't coach everybody in the world, how can we capture this and make sure that we people learn from this so they can change their behaviors and, and become better mm. leaders of others, which is that powerful question, would you want to work for you? So how do we learn to shift from being a manager to being a leader? Yeah. Well, it's a very important distinction. You know, managers are often focused on tasks and on objectives and meeting business objectives and I get that but actually the best leaders are actually focused on the people side of it as well it's not just about the task it's about relationships and it's about building people as part of the building the organization you had a very funny lesson uh, you shared earlier about um, from your Procter and Gamble career yes. and learning to build a plan for leading people as well as I did business indeed. yeah could you share um, that with us sure happy to do that so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let others learn from my mistake I, I was work very young in my career and I was managing some brands uh, in, in Eastern Europe actually at the time and uh, we were getting ready for a budget meeting which is that annual event where you're getting ready to ask the company for the money you need. I think most of us know it very well. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately most of us do and of course it's long hours and getting ready but we felt we were prepared to deliver a plan that would grow the business by 15 percent. So the day came for the budget meeting when we went into our top management and sat there and so, you know, sold our souls and how we were going to grow this business 15% and, and the strategies and plans we put together mm -hmm. and uh, got done with the meeting and there were some tough questions that came back and forth but in the end they said, you know, the general manager said, great job, we are going to give you the money because we believe you can grow the business by 15%. So you can imagine we were thrilled, right? And so we all get up, start to move Hearing out. Hearing a butt. Mm, there's a butt coming. <laughs> and uh, eventually, uh, as I was getting ready to walk out, the general manager says, Brenda, you know, please come back in. And I thought, mm, this can go one of two ways. We'll see how this goes. But actually, his point, he sat me down and he said, Brenda, I believe you will grow the business by 15% because that was a very strong strategic plan for business growth. He said, but you didn't share what you're going to do to grow your people by 15%. Right. <laughs> Didn't think about that. And yeah. from that day on, I always thought, equal, right? How do I build the business? How do I build my people? Because building the people is so fundamental. In fact, he said to me, if you don't grow your business, the people, by at least 20%, you won't be ready for next year. So what are some of the key tips that you share in the book to be able to do that? Lots of tips, but one I would say that's really fundamental that separates leaders from true managers is asking versus telling. You know, too many times leaders tell others what to do but it doesn't grow and develop the people. You need to ask them in ways that gets them thinking, that gets them to, to, to buy into it and to get excited about empowering them to make things mm -hmm. happen. So I think that's probably one of the most important things that I hear people on and on uh, over time. Um, and also around tasks versus relationships. Too many times yeah. we get focused on the task, we don't get focused on the relationships, and so, uh, and yet relationships, as you get older and older and, and more and more seasoned, become more and more important mm. to your ability mm -hmm. to really empower and get people excited and moving forward. What are some other tips? There are some really granular tips in this book. Yeah, well, there's a couple things um, around giving and, f and receiving feedback as a senior leader, as a leader in general. Often uh, we have to give feedback. Learning how to do that a powerful way is very important. Mm -hmm. I always say there's a ratio. There's some new research out that shows that with Generation Y, for example, they want seven positive feedback points before they can accept one. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to be really adapting. Make sure that you're really right. catching people doing things right from a feedback standpoint. I think that's key. Um, another one around just being coachable, being able to accept the feedback as well. How coachable are you? How open are you to feedback yourself? You know, at the senior levels, mm. it's that very easy. That was a big easy. learning from me in yeah. the book, to really remain coachable and never to get mm. to that point where you say, well, mm. I'm the boss, I'm the big boss. What now I, I can that? sit back yeah. and just be great without yeah. having to be coached a lot. It's time. really true. I felt like this book was a peek inside 700 other people's experiences <laughs> to make you stronger, and it's full of great practical tips. Thank you so much Thank for sharing you, it with us. Thank you, I appreciate it very much.